Hey guys, today I am going to talk about why we school year round and why it means so much to me um, to continue the flow that I've created. My name is Beanie Walker. I have five kiddos, 10, 8, 6, almost 4, and a 1 year old in a couple months. And um, I just feel like I've said all the things about how I'm planning and everything else. And, you know, we had a conference this last weekend and one of the main things was you know, your transition from public school to homeschooling is a very big transition, especially if you have, you know, two, three, four kids, what have you, or even just one. Um, Cause then you kind of have these expectations of, oh, well, I'm, you know, I'm gonna need a summer break or I'm gonna, you know, have to go with their schedule or do what they kind of did and have like, you know, two weeks off for Christmas. Um, so when you're just sitting out, starting out and you're planning, um, I highly recommend taking a look at the lifestyle that you kind of want to have and what you want for your kiddo and plan accordingly. And so for us, we do about 43 weeks on. And why I do this is because we take about a month off during the summer and that's really just finishing everything from the previous year. Cause I, every day when we do school, I have them do math every single day. I have them read every single day. And then I have them do um, their language arts every single day like their mazdas or what, what have you not like grammar per se but just their literature reading comprehension work and this is for my first second third fourth actual grade school not you know kindergarten work we'll just work on math and stuff like that and so i you know i really want to i guess buff in time in my schedule for unexpected sickness and illnesses and everything else and the reason I plan to do school so many days is so that I can have those breaks. And so we start um, the basically the first week of July or the last week of June. And the reason I say the last week of June, because that's sort of my soft start. And then my actual start date is the first week of July. So basically right after the 4th of July. And so why I like doing this is, is because I don't want to spend, you know, like the first real week of school explaining, you know, this is how you do this. This is how you get it done. And so I like to take that that last week of June to start introducing these new works and kind of getting them waking up and such <laughs> and like not coming down in pajamas every day and let's try and you know figure out your day and what does it mean to go to your actual cubby and grab your books and you know where are you gonna read these are the pencils let these are the 800 post notes you're gonna read for your literature reading you know and this is your journal this is your notebook and I find that you know last year when we we're doing all this the whole first week was like oh my goodness you need a you know eight highlighters for this work no we need to go buy these eight highlighters or you know we um you need a journal and you need a sketchbook for this work oh my word go get it from the 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 um the you know closet and so what I like about doing this is we we both kind of get to figure out what needs to happen for this to be done and I like my kids to do this with me especially if they're you know third fourth fifth grade because then they kind of get to learn the work what it means for it to get done and actually do it and another reason why I like to do year-round schooling is because I like to keep our rhythm and flow you know humans were a creature of habit and so when something is off it kind of just you know, it, it throws your day off <laughs> and it throws a rhythm off. And so when, you know, my kiddos are, you know, they have a flow of, you know, right when I wake up, I do my morning checklist. I get ready, brush my teeth, make my bed, wash my face and um, go to the restroom and get ready and put some clothes away and pray. And then I come downstairs and then I get my breakfast. We do morning time and then I do some work. To me, as, you know, a mom and a, in, you know, home educator, I like why would I want to mess up what I created you know think about when you use you, you know you used to send your kids to public school or if you're watching this you are sending your kids to public school you know think about like oh my goodness I need you know our kid has to wake up at six in the morning every day or seven in the morning and you know I need to start planning for this two weeks ahead of time and it's like it's like there's always that first couple weeks of school that is backtracking and you're 
okay let's review for a whole month or you know for two weeks what we learned in the previous year and I as a home educator and their mom I don't need to do that we don't need to stop we can just continue to work through um, the curriculum and what I like about what we do is we kind of do the Montessori approach of things where um, I'm not just gonna go through curriculum and just do surface level like let's say we're doing I don't even know <laughs> let's say we're doing reading for instance and you know we she she got the silent E's all figured out right and so now I want, I'm not gonna just skip to the next lesson. I want them to be able to teach it to me. So as a as, as their teacher, I want to not just kind of skim and go through, yeah, you know that, you know that. I just, I want them to basically master it so they can teach it back to me. Or in their science or one of their workbooks, let's say they finish like their whole entire art. You know, we have this create your own planet um, Samuel has this for first grade and then Adeline in third grade has um, draw your adventure book and so in, you know she finished one whole book in two days and this book is like 120 pages long and I'm like you just read through the whole thing she spent the whole day both days working on it and I said well why don't you go back and add some more detail why don't you color it make it exciting and add you know and so same with Samuel, he's like, I'm, you know, done with this page. I'm like, okay, you drew like one little soccer ball on a two page spread of the book. Why not you add some other items to it? And so what I really like about not just being able to do things, you know, progressively, but um, what can, what can we do? What, how can we dive deeper into that subject? How can we, I guess, in what you're interested in, how can we make this more beneficial for you and find some more work to do? Not so much busy work, but you know, if this kiddo is at this reading level, let's find some books that interest them on that level and not just like, you know, whiz through everything is basically what I'm saying. And so, you know, I, I kinda, I, I like that we can still go through things on our pace. And of course, understand if they know two plus two, I'm not gonna, you know, be there for a whole week asking them what two plus two is, but we can move on once they've mastered it. And that's why I really like, you know, this whole approach of yearly schooling is, I don't need to pause. <laughs> I don't need to do anything like that. And I don't need to reteach everything. That's one of my biggest pet peeves. I remember when my kiddos were in piano back in Seattle and then, you know summer hit and I the first time the first year we did it I was like no we need summer off and then when my kiddos went back to piano the whole month was like let's review your notes you forgot your notes you review your, you you know forgot your hand position you forgot how to sit at the piano and so there were these all sorts of things I'm like you know what we're never gonna skip piano during the summer again because to me that was a whole month of wasted lessons and then another month of having to review what we, you already taught so it was technically two months of wasted lessons and so I just I don't like that approach another reason why I really like you know schooling year-round is that um, you know when we have family come into town or anything like that we have that cushion to basically pause and to you know start back up again when you know life happens and that's what I really love about homeschooling you know you don't have to homeschool nine to three like you do at a public school a gr great piece of advice one of the teachers when our kiddos were in school back in Seattle that told me was especially during you know the Rona times um was your kiddos in kindergarten like they should be having fun a lot of their work is sensory and you know they should be you know learning their letters but making it a fun way like they shouldn't be sitting in front of a screen constantly for like four hours like they need to do hands-on things and their school should probably take 15 to 45 minutes per day and then as i was progressing in homeschooling it's like for every single grade that you increase you just add 15 to 20 minutes so then for instance my first grader he's doing an hour and a half ish um, of school instead of you know 45 minutes of school and so like for a three-year-old there's 15 to 20 minutes for a four-year-old there's like you know 30 to 45 minutes for 
you know, a kindergartner, it's like 45 minutes to an hour. For a first grader, an hour to an hour and a half. And then second grader, an hour and a half to two hours. And, you know, so on. Third grader goes up every half hour. So for Abigail, in her fifth grade timber doodle kit, the planner says that she should have about four to five hours of work per day. And so when we were first starting out, I was like, there's no way. How is this going to take this long? And then Abigail, of course, you know, we have a little baby. We have lots of siblings. We have morning time. We have lunch break. We have ballet. We have just ballet breaks or snack breaks, right? And so we were, she's schooling from like nine to like three, four in the afternoon. I'm like, what is going on? What's happening? And so we basically sat down together on her work plan and we highlighted everything that was a core subject you know, and we kind of did like a list of what you need to do in order. And then we wrote, you know, how long each thing takes. And it's two and a half hours for her core subjects, right? And then, um, and then there's like an hour to an hour and a half of three other works that she has to do per day. And what I like about when we school year round is she has that flexibility to be like, you know what? I'm really tired. It's three o'clock. My head, like my brain is drained. I can do this tomorrow. And that's what I really like about this is because we have that flexibility. Of course, when you're planning your school year and everything else, there are state requirements of, you know, how many days you need to be in school. I know some states you have to have attendance or if the public school is in school for a hundred, I don't know, 180 days or 36 weeks, then you too need to be, you know, doing school when they're doing school. So basically check with your state laws and make sure you're doing whatever is required for that. Down in the comments, let me know, do you school year round? Do you do, you know, six weeks on, one week off? Some people would like to do that where they do like a Sabbath kind of homeschooling, you know, where they do six weeks on, one week off, six weeks on, one week off, kind of like that seven week cycle. Other people, they do the Charlotte Mason way where they do, you know, the terms and everything like that. So you do 12 weeks on, a couple weeks off, 12 weeks on, two weeks off like that. And so I know when we were doing the conference, another person said that they do that too. And they really like that because it works really nicely with those three terms. Um, and then they, ha they have that, you know, other 12 weeks in there to have breaks um, in between their terms. And then of course for summer. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, help me out with that algorithm, you guys. I am just completely so amazed. You know, I started this channel a couple months ago, um, or I guess a few months ago now, and I am just in awe that, you know, people are even <laughs> subscribing to me blab about what we're doing and, you know, if I could just shed light on anything that I do um, to help just one person or even to make one person smile, that's really all my goal is, is to just really, you know, help each other out. And I know that for me as an Indian um, woman and married to a black guy, a black and white person, um, having mixed children, I didn't see anybody here on the internet. And if you know them, you know, put them in the comments because I did not see an Indian woman on here who has mixed kids with black, you know, in them, um, YouTubing about homeschooling. I did not see that. And it's something that I think is really lacking. And so this is another reason why I'm sort of sharing what I do because I feel like, you know, our voices need to be heard and everything else. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> I can just always talk about homeschooling. Anyway, so like, subscribe, and thank you so much for watching, and we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.